everybody, and welcome to Jimmy Kimmel Live. I'm George Lopez. Jimmy wanted to take the summer off, so I agreed to guest host. Once again, Mexicans doing jobs that white people don't want. I'm here tonight because I have literally nothing else to do. This is honestly the best way for me to kill time between my Zoom yoga classes. And it's nice for a Mexican to be invited to a mansion in Hollywood and not have to trim the hedges. But you know what I did, actually? I hired the whitest guy on TaskRabbit to come and clean this house. So excuse me. Yo, Chad, don't forget the fan blades. Clean them, or I'll have you deported like that back to Norway. I used to host a late-night show myself. It was called Lopez Tonight. It's been a few years, but, you know, they say that hosting late-night shows is like riding a bike, which we do because we've had too many DUIs. Well, I have. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Well, I know I'm going to have a lot of fun. For all, for all I know, you probably saw my hair and changed the channel 10 seconds ago. Yeah, this hair is something new for me. I decided at 59, it was the perfect age to start looking like a West Hollywood brunch waiter. So I went to my barber, and I said, I want to look like a cross between Danny Trejo and Justin Bieber. I see. Brown skin and blonde hair is what we in the Latinx community call hedging our bets. And people say I keep reminding of someone, and then I finally figured it out. I know who I look like. I look like a cross between Walter Mercado, mucho, mucho amor, and a troll doll. There I am. Just so you know, I didn't actually dye my hair. I got so scared because my Postmates guy showed up without a mask. <sighs> Mayor Garcetti just said that Los Angeles may face another stay at home order a second lockdown. But here in LA, we're just calling it a reboot Fuller House. And if you're like me, and you didn't bother to get in shape for the beach season, congratulations, because everybody who's got D cups, we're all winners. And you know, it's not fair that rich people get to quarantine in huge mansions and poor people have to do it in tiny little apartments. I feel like this time, the second time, that we should switch it up, right? So if you were in a Bel Air estate the first time, this time, a studio in Compton. So Trevor, pack your bags. And please, I want to say hello to my virtual amigo, the only Mexican to ever marry a Karen, Guillermo. Hi, everybody. Como tal, Guillermo? What are you doing? Muy bien. Hey, George, you look like Fabio. Mamon. Thanks. How are you, mijo? I'm doing good. Muy bien. Gracias a Dios. Let me see. What are you wearing? Let me see what kind of suit you have on. Back up. Let's take a look at it. What the? Back up, more Guillermo. Are what? you in your underwear? <laughs> I thought that was Cochino. No, I'm wearing shorts. Short. Oh, thank God. Okay. No, you don't have to spin. But that's that's good. Don't spin, please. So, how have you been handling the quarantine, mijo? <laughs> good. Well, I've been drinking, eating, making sweet love to my wife. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna call ice. Next time you guys want to make sweet love, don't be surprised. All right. All right, Guillermo, gracias. So this is crazy. The immigration agency ICE, or as I call it, Vanilla ICE, is launching a six-week Citizens Academy where they will be teaching ordinary people about how they arrest undocumented immigrants. This is a real thing. It's happening this September in Chicago, and it may be the only school open this fall. Man, a spokesperson for ICE said the goal is to build cages within the community. I, I mean... The goal is to build bridges within the community, not cages. The way things are, let me tell you, if I was in a cage, I might, you know what, just say, I'm good in here. To pass the final exam, you have to run into an Olive Garden kitchen and yell, come on with your hands up! Why are Americans so obsessed with deporting immigrants when there are far worse homegrown U.S. a-holes that need to go? For instance, instead of kicking out a mother of four who volunteers at a food bank, why not deport this maniac? who threw a fit at a grocery store because they asked her to wear a mask. And they say all the good ones are taken. <sighs> Clean up an aisle one, two, four, seven, five. Maybe she's just trying to get into the 10 items or less line. I don't know. Instead of deporting a dentist from Guatemala who's been part of the community for two decades, let's deport these jackasses who painted over a Black Lives Matter mural. I give him a lot of credit because a lot of honkies would have just hired a Mexican to do the painting. We should deport them, but we should send them straight to Africa. Good luck, guys. Instead of ousting a 24-year-old medical student who's been here since she was two, 
when I get rid of Costco Kenny. You're six feet away from you. You're harassing me. My I'm not harassing you. You are impacting us. You, you're I coming close threatened. to me. You're coming close Back to me. Back off! Yes. Threaten me again! Yes. Back the yes. up! Put your yes. phone down. Yes, sir. I did not know that they sold big boxes of steroids at Costco. I guess that meditation app hasn't kicked in yet. And finally, instead of deporting a church pastor, let's get rid of this shameless psychopath who's been sitting there hawking beans in the middle of a pandemic. The president posted a photo to Instagram, smiling with Goya products laid out on the Resolute desk. If only Goya made self-tanner and Adderall. Hey, Donald, ask Jared to Google cabron because it means really good president. And speaking of Trump, after three months, he's doing his daily coronavirus briefings. I mean, thank God, because I was wondering which household cleaner I was gonna drink next. What's the point of these briefings? Every word out of his mouth is a lie. Even calling it a briefing is a lie. It's not brief. The guy talks for two hours. From now on, let's call it what it really is, a storm. The president appeared at his daily storm today. But somebody explain to this goofball that the sooner he takes the virus seriously, the sooner he can get back to doing stand-up at monster truck rallies. But you know, I'd like to congratulate the president for a second on a milestone. Last week marked the 275th time he visited a golf club since becoming president. It's a wonder that he has any time left to destroy the country. And last week when people called him out on it, he tweeted that golf is his exercise. And clearly it is working. Look at that Adonis. Man, listen, I play golf. I play all the time. I love it. But golf counts as exercise the way that Fox counts as news. And Trump's exercise has cost taxpayers $137 million. Can't we just buy that lard ass a Peloton? Since we're paying for it, I want to analyze the president's $137 million golf swing. Let's take a look. So smooth, graceful, like a gazelle. That was just a shot by Don Jr. It's not surprising that Trump has a horrible follow through in each swing. He don't follow through with anything. He swings like a lumberjack who missed a tree. Let's see it again. And we'll freeze it right in, yeah, right there. Let's zoom in. Look at those pants. Why are they so high? That belt is working much harder than it needs to be. And does he think that hiking up his pants makes everything below his waist invisible? From what I hear, it's invisible without pants. Let's see from a different angle. I see some good things here. Look at his core. That's where any great golfer gets their power. He's thick, like the two C's, just like his high school report card. And those childbearing hips, it looks like his water could break in the middle of a downswing. When he yells four, he's giving a donut order. Now let's break down his grip, crucial to any golfer's game. Let's zoom in. As you can see, it's a very unconventional grip, the way he interlaces his fingers. He has such soft, supple hands. He swings, widen back out. Yes, he swings, hitting the ball. Well done, Mr. President. Off goes his caddy to find the ball in the woods. He has a special talent for finding Trump's balls.